Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for just your presence. And Lord, that you live on the inside of us. And Lord God, that you've given us uh, so much for life. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us and guiding us. We give you praise. I pray for each person here tonight, Lord, that just every need that they have is met in you. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to move a little closer to you guys so you can push this. <laughs> uh, a few uh, scriptures that the Lord laid on my heart, and we're just going to look at those tonight. And You know, uh, <clears throat> sometimes people, when they have a small crowd, that's when it's fun. Because, and I just think about Jesus. He always he would have his 12 disciples and minister to them. And, uh, uh, you know, God just can touch the touch the hearts and, and uh, just thank him for that. I want to look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. And uh, uh, I said, I, th I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Um, a few years back, we had a couple come and they did a presentation of, you could pick the book, but they had memorized whole books and they would act it kind of, they wouldn't act it out, but they would quote it and, and uh, kind of play the part of, of Paul. And we had them do the book of Philippians. And I remember when he, he did it, when he would give this, the, the, it, it does give a whole different feel to it when you hear it presented that way. And, and um, the thing that I remember was just the love and care of Apostle Paul. I mean, that really came out when you heard the whole thing spoken. And, uh, and so, you know, he, he, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Just the love and care that, that Paul had and God had put that in his heart, uh, how much he cared uh, for for the people. But it says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I love that promise. And it's good to look for promises in the word of God because every promise is yes and amen to us. And that he will, um, confident of this thing, that he's, the good work that he started, he'll complete. And I was thinking about, you know, Dave, that uh, I really think that that good work was completed in him. And uh, one of the things that uh, Dave would say, uh, almost every prayer I heard him pray is, my steps are ordered of the Lord. And he really believed that, that God was, was leading him and directing him and uh, uh, that it was really a victory for him. We, we miss him, but um, that, that promise that he who begun a good work. I know sometimes, you know, we're in the midst of things. We wonder where we're at. We wonder if we're growing. We wonder uh, just what's going on. And yet this is the promise. And as we look back in our life, we can see that God is at work, that he is the one uh, causing us to grow and, and to helping us each step of the way and we're confident that what he started he'll complete and that is, is such a great great promise to us um, I want to go over to Second Peter chapter 1 if I can get there there we go 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Uh, first thing that we notice that grace and peace can be multiplied. It's something that can grow in our life. It's something that can uh, be multiplied, and it doesn't have to just be just a certain amount. It's, and so grace and peace be multiplied to you as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glorious virtue. Uh, everything that pertains to life and godliness, and I have quoted this verse quite a bit, and, 
and you know everything that we need Jesus Christ already did and we're not trying to obtain we're not trying to get something get him to do something he has already provided it so every need we have everything that comes along in life he's already has the provision for us it's a, the you know the finished work of the cross but but more than that whatever whatever need we face he's already provided whatever situation we find ourselves in uh, he's already provided it for us Many times when we, we approach God or we come to him, we're trying to get him to give us something. And it, you'll, you'll hear people pray that way. Um, uh, I have opportunity to get around some people who, who have that mindset. They're trying to get God to do something. And when you when you've have that revelation, it's very evident. You, your ears, you're, like, you're, you're a dog on point. You're kind of, hmm, you know, uh, because he's already done it we're not trying to get God to do something and that everything we need for life and godliness and uh, the life you know you think about that's a big uh, word there if everything we need in life that he's already provided and we limit him or we don't allow him to do uh, to have his full work many times because we just don't believe that he has provided that and for life and godliness, and this is probably where the battle really comes in because we're trying to make ourselves godly when he's already done the work. You know, we, when we were uh, received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that, that change that happened on the inside, that our spirit man became uh, uh, alive without sin, without blemish, and that we have that, that constant communion with God. And that is just, you know, I, I have been taught that for many years, and yet it, uh, it's mind-boggling because to think that we, we stand that righteous, it says, you know, that he, we're the righteousness of God in Christ. We have been made righteous, and we have that right standing with God. Whether we did everything right during the day, what we think did everything right, whether we think we measured up, uh, we have been made righteous in him. And, uh, and he, is, he is in that process of helping us to walk in godliness. And I used to, when I would say that word, you know, godliness, it was like um, some holy thing that, um, you know, I don't know if you could ever attain it, but, but it said we can walk in that godliness like God, to be God-like, and uh, that we have his ability, you know, and that's really what grace is, that, that he's extended his grace as God's ability to, towards us. We have uh, God's ability, his grace, his ability, which, which expands our thinking, which expands uh, what we think about ourselves. Um, I remember years ago, um, I, was, I worked in the court system for 29 years, and uh, I would go into the courtroom. I uh, was the bailiff and uh, would help the jury and take care of them and did all kinds of different jobs for, for the judge and clerk and all that. But anyway, I remember this, this time that uh, one of the clerks in the office had to testify in court. And it just, it really was freaking her out, which I understand that. And, and uh so she had, to, she had to get in the witness stand, and the judge, he was a pretty gruff old guy. He was the kind of the old-style judge. He was pretty good, uh, Judge Wolfnagel, Wolf and uh, he, was a, he was a rough guy, tough guy. He scared the willies out of you just looking at him. But um, so she, she was trying to answer the question, and she wasn't talking very loud. So she talked really soft. And he got after her. He said, you know, speak up. And she tried, you know, but I could see that she didn't think she could. And, you know, it's interesting how the Lord will teach you things in, in the natural about spiritual things. Because um, uh, in her mind, she didn't think she could. But the truth was, she could 
speak as loud as anybody else in there. And it was an example that it is our mind that limits us. You know, uh, Andrew Womack says our small thinking, but uh, you know, different people have have uh, taught on that. But in our own mind, we think we can't because of what we what we think, our, what we think of ourselves, how we view our our state, our our godliness, our walk with the Lord, and. She simply, she did have the ability, but in her mind she didn't think she did. And that is so true on you know, spiritual matters, too, is that we get or we see ourselves limited spiritually. You know, I could, you know, you might think, well, I could never do that. Or I could never, and yet, you know, and I know there's skill sets and abilities and that sort of thing, but there's a lot of things. We are all very equal, especially if we've been born again, our spirit man, my spirit man is no different than Judy's. It's no different than Andrew's. Or whoever you, you know, whoever you like, you know, or Todd White or whoever. My spirit man, the ability that's available to me is the same as any of those guys. But where the limit is, is right here. Because I don't believe that. When I became pastor, I, um, I didn't... Uh, become pastor until I was like 50, 51 or something. And uh, many people in the church would testify. I even had them still come up. I can't believe the change. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't see myself in that position. I was limiting. And of course, everybody, oh, I was, that's where I, <laughs> where I was. But I've been amazed at what God can do if you let him. You can get up and speak. You can prophesy. You can. I mean, it's, it's just the, because, you know, the, the, the one who is um, the, who the very spirit of God lives on the inside of me. He was the preacher, the teacher. Uh, we have the mind of Christ. And, you know, that's a whole nother, whole other thing in that we have access to so much more than what we tap into. And so we may think we're limited in our, uh, in our physical, which we, we can be, but when we tap into the spiritual, we're not limited. And so when he says that we, he has all that pertains to life and godliness, really the limits are endless in you know, what we can tap into. You know, I think about Apostle Paul. You know, um, he was educated in, in the... Uh, Jewish law and, and and that, but what he learned spiritually, he did not learn from anybody except by the Spirit of God. And I think a lot of what he learned was by praying in the Holy Spirit, and and just praying in tongues, and uh, and getting the interpretation, getting revelation through that. And it didn't have anything to do with his, his scholar ability. It had to do with his, him tapping into the spiritual things. And so when we begin to realize that, begin to see that there, the, the limits can be taken off. I have one guy in the congregation that he's always telling me, Sandy, you're stretching me, you're stretching me. Because there is so much more if we can learn to get in uh, and how to tap into that spiritual flow uh, because it, it says uh, that you know, we have the mind of Christ and God has chosen to reveal the mysteries to us. And yet we, we limit ourselves in our thinking or limit ourselves in our, uh, uh, you know, what we could, how we could flow in the Holy Spirit or the revelation that we, that we have. And we put the limits on when he's wanting to stretch us more and more. Here, see, he, this is the 20 after crowd coming in. <laughs> but they, they've been to the Dream Center. Well, that maybe if it, we share about maybe what went on down there. So uh, when you know, so that he, we have all that pertains to life and godliness, you know, and that's the thing that, uh, I, since Linda's here, I, I liked what you said this morning. She was praying that, you know, God use me. Well, then she began to change her prayer to God, make me usable. Because that means, okay, Lord, you can work on the things that need to be. And um, 
So many times with, when we think about our walk with the Lord, we limit ourselves, oh, I could never do that, or I could never, whatever, whatever you put in there. And I know that the callings, and you know, there's different things that come into that. But what, is, what we can do is so much more. And when the church gets, gets a hold of that, as a church, to realize we have so much more than what we've walked in, and that it is, there isn't any limit. Um, you know, we, we, we hear testimonies and, um, about you know, somebody going out the door, getting ready to go pray for somebody, and suddenly they're just translated you know, several hundred miles away, uh, either by the spirit or reality, however it happens. Um, I get a kick out of, of Mary because she goes very logical on all that. She wants to know how that's going to work. Now, does the body actually stay here or do you go? I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> if the Lord takes you there, however it works. But, the, but in the spirit realm, it is more real than the natural realm. And what does the word of God say? That, the, that, that what we see is temporal and subject, you know, it's, it's subject to change. That the spiritual world is so much more real than what we have right here. But we limit ourselves in our thinking of what we can do. And God has a way of stretching us. He has a way of, and, um, and he moves us. Uh, we did a, when we was having a study uh, in one of our Bible studies, we taught that God always is on the move, you know, glory to glory, faith to faith. Uh, that it's an ever expanding, and it should be happening in our life. Uh, that the, the, the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. You know, uh, as we walk with the Lord, we should expect that as we walk along that we, 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 we operate more in faith. Our, our path is brighter than what it started. Uh, all these things that you know, from glory to glory, just this, this always expanding and that we end up uh, being in walking in a spirit realm that's much bigger than we ever imagined. Um, and so, you know, so when I was thinking about, you know, God used that example of that, that woman trying to testify in court and just, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't speak loud. And God's always you know, brought that up to me different times. You know, she could. It was all in her head that she didn't think she could speak loud. And, uh, you know, I, there was a time I thought, well, I could never get up in front of people. Well, what's limiting me? This right here. It's how I saw myself, my identity, how I viewed me. And uh, the Lord really doesn't care how you view you. <laughs> and, and he wants to, to break that, that you could do so much more than you thought you could because you have the greater one on the inside of you. Um, the ones that I, you know, know here... Uh, what God has done. Uh, you know, Brenda, uh, when we remember when we went to the Indians years ago, what God has done. <laughs> you know, so much more than we ever imagined, right? And, uh, and we, and God has a way of just taking us and, and uh, Doug and Lynn to think about <laughs> where God's taken you the last five years. Uh, you guys should have started a journal. Uh, just what God has done. Some of it you'd probably have some blackout days, like, I don't think I like this day. <laughs> and yet God has used that, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, and there's not ever any wasted, everything is preparation for the next step. Even if you're in a boring job or a job you hate, God will use that and it might be the catalyst that says, you know what? I think I can do something outside of what I thought I was. He has a way of just, you know, opening up that. And I know in my life that's what he did. He took me from position and job to job. And each one was just more than I thought I could ever do. And then, you know, I got there and, and you, you lean into his grace. And I love what Greg Moore, that leaning into his grace. I love that illustration, you know. When you, you just lean into him and, uh, and, and you think, well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, maybe you can't, basically with your mindset because you've just put the prison up. But when you lean into him, you can do far more. Uh, 
and walk in the Spirit. And, we're, and our aim is to not only, you know, live, we have our life in the Spirit, we have that, that uh, flow, but we want to walk it. We want it to be in every area of our life. We want that to that each day be that walk. And, you know, and that, that, is our, that is our aim. And to do far more than we ever thought we could. And, uh, uh, and to take off the limits. And God just, he just kind of keeps... And sometimes he sets us up. When I went out and, you know, to teach at the Bible school... I tell them that you can't always trust God. He's tricky. <laughs> and they go, well, you can't trust God. Well, you trust him, but he has a way that you think you're going to go this way, and he has a way that, no, you're going to go this way. And uh, he sets you up. He sets you up to be successful and to overcome your mindsets or your failures, and you find yourself in a position that you have to trust him. Um, I've shared this several times, but when I first started pastoring, uh, and I, I was working here, but I was also still working as the clerk of the district court, and uh, uh, one of the people at the court, she came to this church, and um, she, she got cancer, and, we, and um, you know, we prayed for her, and it didn't turn out exactly the way we wanted it to, but she went on to be with the Lord. Well, that was my first funeral that I'd ever done in my life, I uh, didn't have any funeral training. Um, my mentoring uh, pastor, he just sent me some tips, email. Thanks, Fred. You know, uh, <laughs> no standing beside you. Now do this. Uh, here, you've seen a funeral, do it. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, I was a little apprehensive. Plus, all my peers from work were going to be here. And it, was a, and it was a really well-known family, so the church was packed. My first funeral. And I uh, was like, oh, Lord. And, uh, and so we would had a speaker here, and he would said, you know, I'm anointed for living. You know, whatever you do, you're anointed to go shopping. You're anointed to do, you know, he was just thinking, anointed to do the dishes because we always have, the, always have this Holy Spirit with us. And he's the anointing. And so we're anointed to do anything. So the Lord quickened to me, I'm anointed to do funerals. Not something that I really aspire. But, um, you know, I just, uh, but anyway, I begin to confess that. And I begin to say, you know what, I am anointed. And just like that, my mindset changed. You know, and there was an authority that came. You know, suddenly I thought, yeah. You know, and I have this, and I have, and was it a perfect funeral, you know, as far as my delivery and all that? No, but it stretched me, and it, and it was a huge step, knowing that I could do far more than what my, my head, or my, how I viewed myself, what I could do, and all, you know, and, you know, uh, Joyce Meyer, I think he, she kind of coined you know, the battlefield of the mind. I mean, that is where the fight is. And the enemy tries to come in to that. And, and not that he causes everything, but he takes opportunity. And um, in that battle is there to convince you that you can't do, or you are less, or you don't have the power, or you don't, you know, he just, he picks at that. And... Uh, and really, that's where the battle is. Just like that lady testifying, she had all of the ability to speak louder. Because I heard her speak louder in the office. She was quite loud, actually. But in that setting, when she got nervous, it just she just couldn't do it. And I felt so bad for her because the judge really... But he was also hard of hearing, but... You know, that, but if she just would have just go, you know what, I can, she could have yelled. And we can do that in the spirit also. And that's where we ask, you know, uh, like back to, to Linda, Lord, you know, when we say use me, we're thinking, well, within our ability. Make me usable changes it. And I have such a good point because then you're saying where I need 
change, where I need to change my mindset, or where I, where I need to lean into your ability and uh, his ability. And I said, we have different abilities, but we can excel in places we don't have a, the ability because he has the ability. And the Lord can make you look good in areas you are not good because his ability is so, so strong there. So he gives us all that pertains to life and godliness. And there's so much more, you know, um, and it, it can be not in what we think spiritual things, but in the natural, you know. It can be with finances or uh, having that mind to be able to, uh, those witty inventions, uh, or the Lord showing you uh, how, to, how to manage your money. I mean, it, there's, there's all kinds of things that can c come into as we change our thinking and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. And we probably all have areas in our life where we look back and there were times that we think no, thought nothing was going on, but the Holy Spirit was working on us and showing us some things that we might have not even thought it was very spiritual at the time, but we see how he used that to make a spiritual change in our life. That's like when, you know, when I did work at the court, the things I did, you know, it was just office management type things that didn't have any direct relationship to some spiritual thing. But then God has used that to, to help me walk out what I need to do as pastor. And so it ended up having, it was the training ground. And sometimes just that patience, steadfast. Well, I don't like this job. I want it to change right now. Well, there's a time he delivers you from the, that job but also just the process of staying in a job, being faithful, staying there until there's that opportunity teaches you to be patient, steadfast, standing on the word, knowing God's going to do something. And so you learned how to get a bulldog bite on faith and hang on. And then when opportunity, you move on. Because there's times that you, we do, do not see what we want to see in the natural, but yet we know God's working. And so we don't give up. You know, so so important that we get that that we learn to be steadfast and that we learn to be patient and we learn to do a good job when somebody's watching and when they're not because that will have direct uh, implication in our spiritual as we learn you know what I'm on I'm going to take the high road no matter if if anything else if anybody notices and I'm going to I'm going to uh, do the right thing spiritually whether nobody and all that has to do with your character. I can't tell you. I read it today, but I'm not sure where it is. So you'll just have to trust me. And maybe it's right here. But it says, um, and maybe you know where it is, where it, talk, it, it kind of goes through a sequence, and, and it says that it, it, it affect, uh, affects your character. You know what the scripture I'm talking about? Um, and it may be, uh, you know, self-control, has to be, I was reading it. You know, it goes through that one thing leads to another. You know what, it, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, one of them was, says it affects your character, and character affects this. Well, character has direct uh, uh, influence on your spiritual walk because you learn how to be, we're not moved by what we see or how we feel or those things. We're moved by faith. And, we're, and we get even away from we're not moved by open doors, even though we may take an opportunity, but we're moved by faith. Because sometimes we need to go push the door down. <laughs> you know, if, if we get the word of the Lord, you know, and it, and it has to do with that. And if we're just led by circumstance, because if we're led by open doors, sometimes all we're doing is being led by circumstances. We need to hear and sometimes the circumstances don't look right at all, and yet God's called us to do something. And so, uh, just uh, so everything that that we need is in Him. It's just in Him, and we learn to lean into Him. And faith takes a hold of that grace. You know, I don't know how He's going to do it, but I'm going to lean into Him because I know He's given me the ability to do it. And uh, and I know Judy, you know you. Some of the stuff you're doing now, you just can't believe that you're doing it. And, and you started a little bit, you've been through life, but some of the stuff has been major since you retired. <laughs> you know, 
and the world would say, okay, you know, you can just go sit down, and, but God's been stretching you. And that is so good, what he's doing. And he's putting the, you know, putting the, the body uh, together, praise God. So Philippians 4.13, you guys could, you can quote that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we know that that doesn't mean, hey, I can go lift a thousand pounds and con you can confess all you want. I'm not going to lift a thousand pounds. But if I needed to lift a car off of somebody, maybe so. You know, uh, if if the need if the need is there, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The impossible. And so I can do. And sometimes it is. The, the biggest, some of the biggest challenges we face is very simple things like a, a, a spirit of fear or fear that I can't do something or a, a, um, a, a fear of getting up in front of somebody or a fear of these things that doesn't seem that big, but I can. And be like the, what is it, the little choo-choo train? Uh, I can. But I can not just in me, I, I, I can because I'm leaning into his grace, into his ability, into uh, to what he has, and I can because of him. I can do all things who strengthens me. You know, he, he strengthens, he gives me uh, physical strength, spiritual strength, uh, social strength. And that isn't something we always talk about, that, that strength to stand up and not be affected by any social class. And to be you and not intimidated by those who you think, I mean, you might not think they're better than you or whatever, but you can get that pressure in the world. And you know that that hasn't anything to do. Um, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And praise God for that. So Colossians, uh, let's look at there, chapter uh, 1, verse 9. For this reason we do also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom, spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and, and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his love. And we'll, we'll stop there. But you know, uh, here again, Paul is praying, and he's really praying that expansion, to be expanded in knowledge and wisdom, to be expanded, in, and he prays it all the time, which tells us that prayer has power. You know, uh, I don't think Paul would be doing anything that was a waste of time. He was praying, and he was praying declaration. You know, he, he's, he's, he's praying over that, that uh, there would be the, the increase of knowledge of God. And, and, and to, and, you know, that's huge, uh, that we would have an increased understanding of the knowledge of God. Uh, to be strengthened with all might. Again, just being this expansion. It's the expansion uh, thing that we just, God's just getting bigger and bigger uh, on the inside of us. And you know, it's all there. It's just us learning to release that and let that happen. And Paul's praying this. And he says, I, you know, I don't, I don't stop praying this. And you, and, you know, and you notice here he doesn't say, and I, I pray all the time that you'll know what sins you're committing. Praise God. <laughs> he, so many times in Scripture, what it doesn't say tells us a lot. You know, and he said, this is what I'm praying. And if you notice, that Paul's prayers are pretty positive prayers because they're the declaration of God's will and his potential in you. Uh, that is one of the uh, lessons that uh, when we had uh, uh, Bae Young Kim from uh, the Korean here, one of the things that just kind of went off in me, you know, don't, it's so easy uh, to look at the negatives. 
And if you have employees, you can do, you know, you know, they're not doing this right. It's so easy to look at the negatives. But when Paul was praying he, and, and, and what Day Young Kim, he was saying, you know, you look past all that and you speak and declare and you're looking into the potential of that person. And that started to change things for me because when I began to address that in prayer, when people come up for prayer, and you address that, you're not trying to fix the problem, you're speaking to the potential of that, that life that's on the inside of them and that gifting, and you begin to speak to that, people respond to that. And they, they begin to come into that image as you address it. For one thing, it gives them hope, and all of a sudden, they, there's just like life's there. If you just address the problem, you come against it, well, we're going to bind that and this... Well, yeah, and you may need to do that. I'm not saying, but then they're all focused on that. But Paul, he was focusing on in his prayers that they would have increased wisdom, understanding. And so when you focus in, and it's hard sometimes when you're around people you're familiar with because, you know, you see their shortcomings. And one of the ones you're most familiar with is you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so when you're, when you're praying, you're like, okay, I don't know if I have any faith for this, but <laughs> you know, I, know my, I know my track record. But you speak to the potential. But the potential is a reality because you have inside of you that limitless power of the Holy Spirit, that spirit man that's perfect, that the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. You have that. that. And it was interesting as I began you know, consciously Try, you know, change that. I saw people who I didn't really think would um, have much potential. You know, it, we do that. We, we put people in boxes, right? And I saw them respond. I saw all of a sudden power level come up, a change. And so uh, when, when you see that in other people, you know, that's how God affects us. I mean, when, when so he's speaking that and you know, it's almost, you can almost say it's a prophetic prayer. <laughs> you're speaking forth a declaration that maybe you're not seeing in the natural, but you're speaking it forth in your life, and you're speaking that forth. And, and Paul, you know, he said he, he was praying this all the time, the power of your words, the power to pray makes a difference. And, he, and using his words to pray over these people. And like I said, Paul didn't think it was a waste of time. And I don't know if you've ever been there where you think, well, why pray? <laughs> I know you guys are also holy. You wouldn't do that. But, you, but, but he was saying, you know, I make mention of you all the time. I declare, I say this. And it, you, know, you read the greetings or the, you know, he, what he was doing. And he was speaking to what they, their identity of who they really are. And I'm sure if we met them, they'd be just like us. They weren't super human beings with super abilities, but Paul was speaking to that. And that we can do that for each other. You know, you can do that with your spouse. Begin to, instead of uh, praying, oh Lord, you know, uh, change them. <laughs> but you speak and declare the wisdom, that the, you know, that the wisdom, the knowledge would increase. And pray that for yourself. And for those that you're praying for, and look not at this, their shortcomings or their flesh, but you, you speak to the potential. The only way to overcome the flesh and to really win the flesh and to win over sin is to, uh, to look at the spirit and to look at the remedy and not try to fix the problem because Jesus already fixed the problem. So we go to him and it's by his love that fixes those things. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Such a familiar verse, and yet we don't, we walk in maybe 1% of it. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, you know, we, we can do. And we can uh, flow in the Holy Spirit. We can preach the word. We can hear God's voice. We can speak it out, we, and we begin to uh, walk, walk in that. Amen? Praise God.